start directly on time because otherwise he will, you know, get lost from afar. So, Kiana, uh, yeah. thank you very much for coming. If you don't know me, I'm Debbie Whitey, and the director here at USP. Standing in for John, who today with Helen having uh, on the time, no doubt. Um, so, we're really honoured to have uh, up here speak to us tonight. But before we begin,
victim. I really enjoyed my schooling here in Rotonga when I first started school. I had a great time. All my cousins, all my friends go to school, talk to a Māori, everything was good and made sense, you know. But then when I first moved to New Zealand, like so many who do that, maybe many people here have had that experience. When you move to New Zealand and you go to school there, very different, it can be a bit of a struggle to adjust. And I imagine many people in this room have had that experience. Yeah? Yeah. Um, but, you know, eventually it came right and I finished, I finished my schooling there in Taranaki. And I think I was lucky, as I said before, that was a place very strong, <laughs> very strong in the pure Māori Aotearoa. And so that helped me to maintain my understanding of the ao Māori nui. So, tō tātou ao Māori ikonei e tō rātou ao Māori Aotearoa. Because, e priyanga, ne? E priyanga. E te tei tei me, a e tei tei te marumana tā. E, no reira, tō maua o i te manako Māori. Um, after that, I went to university at the University of Auckland and I studied Māori studies and linguistics. When I first went there, there was no Māori kukiarini happening. But soon after that, that was when Paparami Moikaa started, and I studied with him when, when he was there for a while as well. Um, eventually, after quite a long time, I studied for a time, went away, did other things, studied, came back again. I completed my BA in Māori Studies and Linguistics, and my MA in Māori Studies, and for that I studied <coughs> something in Reo Māori Aotearoa something linguistic in there. That was what I studied for my MA. But then for my PhD, Tato Akukoro on my PhD, to Tato Reo, to Tato Reo Māori Kuki Aireni, te o Kopanga o to Tato Reo. So, te o Kopanga, the grandma. Yeah, so, ako pe e te Kopanga o to Tato o Kangianga, to Tato o Kupu, to Tato o Takea to e te Takea to Kore. So, ko e te Akukoro on my PhD. I'm on my phone. Yeah. 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 Te o reo, te papa amo te o reo, koe te linguistics i reira. So, I am a lecturer at Massey University and I am in the linguistics department. So, I teach students about all the languages of the world, including our languages. Yeah. Um, but I have another job, which I think is actually don't tell anyone, but a bit more important. <laughs> My other job, which as Mama Anna explained, is um, I look after the its technical name is the Diploma in Pacific Vernacular Languages, Cook Islands Māori. <coughs> eh? Mea au teia a ka akumata tātou i te 2017. Eh? 2017 akumata. Tēta i kuhu, tēta i o rātou i konei. Eh? Uh, o te atu a te next year 2021. Eh? So, api ana rātou e Tainuru Marua pepa, 12 papers they study. So we've had uh, this one group we started 2017, they all started. Most of this group are teachers who teach here in the Cook Islands, mostly Māori teachers. Um, a few people from other walks of life at the beginning, but mostly teachers. And together, we've done a lot of learning there. Nui te api yanga. But um, <coughs> the two main focuses of this work is for me to pass on some of the knowledge that I've learned doing my doctorate to other people so that other people can also know and understand this stuff and that that can support them to be better teachers. And ultimately, our ultimate goal is to 
be better able to support the revitalization of our language. That's the, the fundamental idea underneath it. Yeah. And the, the, okay. They're the Papano or Tahu or Adam. They are both. I'm not that. They are the real Maori Kukiari. They are the Oranga. They are the Maori Kukiari. And if they are the Tahu, they are the Tahu. 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 So I'm just going to go through these things quickly. And if we get enough time, we play a little game. <coughs> okay, so now what? Why do you know Maori or the cookie irony? Eh? 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 What is a language and when is one language different from another language? And this is a question that's very difficult even for experts about language, right? So under one way of dividing, we say we have two languages here, right? We have Leo Wale, Pukupuka, and Leo Maori, right? That's one way of dividing, yeah? Another way of dividing is to say we have however many there are, 13. 13, is that right? <laughs> different islands with people speaking on them? Yeah? 13 different reo. Yeah? So, inua te tai e reo tōna. Inua te tai e reo tōna. That's another way of dividing. Right? But another way that we sometimes divide is if you speak a language and your neighbour in the next door island speaks a language and it's easy for you to understand each other, you're speaking the same language as far as linguists are concerned. You still, it's still not the same, it's a different, it's a different variety and it belongs to your island and it's important and special, but it, we usually consider that to be the same language with different varieties. So we say that we have te reo o te paitonga o te kukiarini. So la roka i akoi te i te marama i te ore o te paitonga mea rara. La rotonga koe mea rara, makutoru koe mea rara, aistaki mea rara mungaia, la roka i akoi te marama Ite o te o te ingoa i te paitonga. I nga rai, te tai tai mi, me rongo koe i te rara maangonga, maangonga tā i te marama. Ne, tamo? Ne, me o, maangonga tā i te marama. E te rato tō, te reo raka ngā maniki. Mama atu, i nga rai, maangonga tā. So, we as linguists say, if the opposite is true, if you speak one language and Someone over here speaks another language and it's not easy, not straight away easy to understand. We say probably that's maybe a different language. That's what we say. So under that system, we would say that we have the Wale, the Wale Wai Tonga, 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 the Well, of that story is, it's a very difficult question to answer, and it doesn't really matter how we break it up, because in me of walking at the audio, they're all very important. So, um, I don't like to use the word dialect, as my students know, because I think that word has got some bad feeling attached to it, right? When people say dialect, they sometimes think, oh, that's not the right language, right? But every language is a dialect according to linguists. So, what, I'm, what the language I'm speaking now, Reo Popa A New Tirini, that's a dialect of English. But you know what? The Reo that the Queen of England speaks, that's a dialect of English too, right? Mm. Everybody speaks a dialect of their language, right? But, because people have such bad feeling about the word dialect, when I talk about our different languages, our different Reo Inwa, I say we have different variety. So we have the Mo'oke variety and the Ajitaki variety and the Rarotonga variety. Yeah? So it's a bit more neutral, but that's what we talk about. Ne, the Okunukiaki. But, te tai tai me, 
So we have a two different situations here at home in the home islands. The pa ingwa, strong in the language. The normal everyday language in most, most places, for most households, most families, and most schools in the pa ingwa. But here in Marutonga, the exact opposite. At school, real pop art, the new one with the E ite kaina ite mutu are, reo koko a. Me kare, manga rara maori te tumetua, ka umai tumetua te reo koko a. Te 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 tuanga. So that one's called receptive bilingualism, where the, the mamas and the papas and the mutua, they speak maori maybe at home most of the time, but the children answer all the time in English, and when they speak, they speak English. That's called receptive bilingualism. So sometimes we have that, and sometimes our kids Kare ki te te reo, kare. Reo kopa a ua, some of our kids. Okay. And those of us who work in schools, we know that for sure, right? Any of us who are in schools in Rarotonga know what it's like. I heard that one principal at a school in Rarotonga say they have 97% of their kids, 95% 90, 90, of their kids coming in, reo kopa a ua, mm. English, <coughs> English only, it's coming into school, you know? And that's uh, something for us to worry about. Because if our children aren't speaking our language, we have the one monata and 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 we have the one Aka mana i te reo Māori, Māori kukia arini i Akurana, i Mitirini. Koi koi mai tātou i, I tēta i te tangata kukia arini ki te arara Māori, ki te aka i tēta i te tamariki i te arara i te reo Māori. Aka te mana mana tā, e roti i tēta i tūtū. Te matoro nei rato, te rua rāro nei rato, i roti i te reo Māori. E rā matoro no rato, e nā rā. かれたりきかれかれたりきたいまえそれてやてたいもんまたあのまたのんのいいあくらなあがまたまたいてこいてたまりきこいてたまりあもんまたもんまたタイムでおままておばばたりタイムでもんえてだいねもんまたえだぶ
but then once they've done that and they've set themselves in and they've set up their structure and they've started their school, then they're like, oh no, your language is no good, you must speak our language, right? And that's what happens. And I know that some people here would have experienced a, a very traumatic and sad thing when they were at school, where they were punished for speaking Māori, right? That happened to some of you, I know, right? And this is a very sad thing. And this is a thing that makes it difficult for you when you become a parent to feel good about speaking Māori to your kids, right? Because you associate that with a trauma, with a bad feeling, with a very bad feeling, right? And that's one of the factors why a lot of people didn't pass on the language to their children, people who went to school in the 50s and 60s, right? That's one of the reasons why. And that's not the children's fault, and it's not the parents' fault. It's not the anganga kino, the papa, the reina, right? And this is an important thing to me. It's common for people to blame the kids, to say it's the kids' fault that they don't speak the language, right? But how do you learn a language? How does a baby learn a language? <coughs> The baby learns the language that it hears. It learns the language that it hears. And if the baby doesn't hear Reo Māori, it won't learn Reo Māori. And did the baby decide what language was going to be speaking, spoken in the baby's house when it was a tiny, tiny baby? The baby didn't decide. And maybe, I'm also saying, maybe the mitua didn't decide either, didn't freely decide. Got pushed, got pushed into that decision. You know, that's what I'm saying. So I think it's important that we tuku the aroa, ilo tu ya tapu, ari tuku the rara kino, tuku the aroa, because ima mai, ima mai te ya, ima mai nui, ne, ko ya tuku na ko, so rara maru, rara maru ni te aroa, ko ya tuku na ko, so all these reasons, all these things from outside that came. And to all these pressures from outside, we all started, we say in linguistics, we shift, shift to real pa'a. So we shift from being mostly we speak Māori all the time to mostly we speak English all the time. Right? And all those things that happened. The, the TV coming in English in the 1980s, that was a big factor. The airport getting bigger so the big plane could come, that was a factor. Right? As I said at the beginning, when I went to school in the early 80s, a lot of Māori they were coming again. But sometime between the early 80s and the end of the 80s, that shift had started, right? And those were two big factors that happened. The TV came, the pop art TV, and the big aeroplanes with more and more and more pop art speaking tourists every day came. And those are two things from outside. Those are not things we did. Those are things that came from outside and pushed that change and started to make that. And at first, we didn't, we didn't notice because when things change slowly, you don't notice, right? When you're just living your life and things are slowly changing, you don't really notice. But slowly, 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 we've begun to notice over the last maybe 10 or 15 years, we've seen, oh, tuku te amana mana ta, te kare te tauri ki erani te Slowly, 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 until today where I think there isn't, very many people left who don't believe that there's a problem, I would say. When I first started this work, when I first started my PhD, sometimes I would go and talk to people and they were like, oh no, it's not really true. We still have our language, we're very strong, and they were denying, like climate change deniers, you know? Like, <laughs> despite all the evidence, <laughs> they were saying, no, no, it can't be true. And that's because in their little part of the world, it was true, you know, they were good, they were strong in the language and strong in the culture, and they weren't able to see uh, those uh, 75,000 other people <laughs> who, who, who are sitting outside and not thriving inside Te Reo Māori and Te Reo Māori, yeah? Yeah, but... So, now that we're in this position where most of our children are not speaking Māori, we have a difficult task ahead of us because it's not straightforward and it's not simple to try and get uh, older children and adults 
to learn a new language. It's just as hard for our older children and adults to learn Māori if they didn't learn it when they were a child, as it would be for, for them to learn Russian or Swahili or any language that they didn't learn when they were a baby, right? And this is a thing in linguistics, we talk about the difference between L1 acquisition or native acquisition, which is what happens when you're a baby and you just learn the language that's around you and you don't have to think about it and just suddenly by the time you're four years old you can speak your family language or languages, right? That's L1 acquisition. And that's a really easy process, and if you speak one or two or five languages to a baby enough, it'll learn them all without even trying, right? That's it. Until you're about maybe six years old, that's what will happen. But after that point, it starts to change after about that time, and by the time a child is maybe 12 years old, if they try to learn the language at that age, they're learning as an L2, as a second language learner. And that is a hard, hard thing to do. If any of you have tried to, so most of you in this room are probably bilingual with English and Māori, or maybe prefer one or the other, right? Um, have you ever tried to learn another language? Ever tried to learn French, or Spanish, or German? Or api so if you if you have to learn the language as an as an adult with your adult brain, which is anything over about twelve years old, it's much, much harder to learn the language than it would have been if you were exposed to it as a baby. Very, very hard. Not impossible. Not impossible if we, we do it the right way and we try hard enough, right? But it is hard. And it can be very stressful and demoralizing, right? And if maybe some of you here are learners of Reo Māori and you've been trying to learn and you've possibly, I predict, found it a bit difficult and then had some bad feelings about that experience, had felt some stress and maybe some akama, right? Because it is hard, it's a hard thing to do to learn and when we tell each other, which is what we do, that our real Māori is so, so very important, which it is, it is, and sometimes we say things like kare reo to tato, kare to tato, right? How do you think the person who's learning the language and struggling to learn the language, how do you think they feel when they hear this kind of message? Because they know it's so hard for them and they know they don't always understand what people are saying and they can't always say what they want to say when they want to speak Māori and they're trying really hard but it's slow, it's a slow process and it's very discouraging how slow it is and people you know, get really stressed out about it, and then people say that. Oh, can you imagine that feeling? Maybe some of you don't need to imagine. Maybe you've experienced it, right? <laughs> um, it's it's hard, right? And so that's why we need to be a bit more careful about the way we talk about this, right? I think the main main thing is we need to stop blaming. We need to stop blaming our kids and stop blaming ourselves. We it's it's pointless to keep doing what doing that, and it's harmful and it hurts. Hurts everyone, it hurts our kids and it hurts us. You know, we feel the shame, we feel the guilt, and when we talk like that to our kids, it's discouraging. When they speak Māori and it's a bit mama tarawake and you akatamo kino, yeah, yeah, it's discouraging. You're discouraging them from trying to speak, you know, and when you're really fussy about that's not quite right and that's not quite right and that's not how I would say it, and that's your response when your child speaks Māori to you, that's discouraging next time they maybe won't try you know we've got to shift our our attitude about it to uh you know those are with the mama to do the other one yeah so we've got to try and do it that way you know try and be raramaru akakuruma teo tuanga kari te rataki So, what do we 
detta in mano a te, ho detto, 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 ho So most of us here understand that in order to for your language to carry on you need to speak your language to your children, right? So for us it's real Māori and we must speak Māori to our children so that they can learn it. And this is true and it won't happen if we don't do that. But another thing after that is So there's another step in there that doesn't often get talked about, which is very important that we speak Māori to our kids, but they need to speak it to each other. Otherwise, when they grow up and they have their children, they won't. They won't teach it to their kids. If they don't speak it to each other and go through that important part of language development, because if you think about it, you speak your language, whether it's your Māori or Papa or whichever one is your language, do you speak exactly the same as your parents? Manga tuke, tuke nui. And this is the same in every, every language. Every generation speaks a little bit differently to the one before, and that's because the mere kuakuna iarato ite api i ma tu tu ite reo, te reo otuna kayaki. The peer language, right? 
Children grow up to sound like their peer group. They don't grow up to sound like their parent. So what happens if there's no peer group? There's no peer group for the deal. They're missing a really important step in that language development because that's a, a more, uh, you can't have one without the other. So if the parents don't speak to the babies, the babies won't learn. But if the babies don't speak to each other, or the tamariki don't speak to each other, they also won't continue to learn. They won't, that won't happen. They don't talk to each other. Because that's a very important part of first language acquisition is peer language, speaking to your peer group. And that's, a, that's the thing that's really missing for us. We have many households where maybe the parents do speak Māori, and those are the situations where uh, the parents speak Māori and the kids understand that they speak English back, right? But they speak English to each other. And that's where it's going to stop if we don't intervene, you know? Because we've got to get them speaking to each other. So how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, I don't know absolutely, but I have a little corner of an idea of something that we can do to try and encourage our kids back to our language, right? And that's to turn it the other way around. Instead of saying, we're encouraging them back, so we hear all the time, oh, the kids these days, they just like their phones, and the computer and the internet, and that's all they ever do is they're always on their phones or their whatever. We all say it, we all see it. That's what they're doing, right? That's the thing that makes them happy, right? So I say, in that case, why don't we put the language in there where they want to be, right? Where they're happy and where they feel confident and where they don't, where they feel they have agency and they feel like they know what they're doing in that our world Right? They feel good in there. Over there, where they're feeling good, good, and not feeling like they're not living up to the heavy expectations of all of their ancestors, right? When they're over there, just sneak the little language in there. That's my, that's the main gist of my theory, is take the language to them, to their place where they're happy. Instead of trying to bring them over into some place where they're really stressed out and they feel like they're going to get told off and they feel like they're doing it wrong and they're disappointing their family and the Atu and everybody, you know? Like, over here where it's just for fun and it's the thing they really usually enjoy, sneak that ill in there and put it in there. <coughs> That's my little trick. So what does this mean? Encourage them to talk about the stuff they normally talk about. Encourage them to talk about their pop culture things, their pop stars, their movies, all of those kind of things. Encourage them to talk about that, but to talk about it it the things that they love and the things they know about and feel confident to talk about. Right? Those two things. Um, this, this has a benefit for lots of reasons. If we get the kids playing with the the, the Pahu Ruruira, we can um, get them talking on there and we get them making new stories new stories, i te reo Māori, and all of that kind of thing. And viviki i te tua tua is really fast to be able to, they, they make a story on the device through whatever method, and then just like that, you can put it on Facebook, or put it on YouTube, or put it on the parent email list, or wherever it goes, and it's spreading around. And it can spread from children to children as well, which is this, magic missing thing that we're worrying about is the children speaking to the children. We get them sharing with each other the way they share their stuff they share when they're always sharing, you know, they share on their phones, sharing this, sharing that. If they're sharing marae Māori and they find it enjoyable and they find it exciting, that's the, that's the idea, that's what we're trying to generate here. Um, so, sometimes all it takes is the thing the device, right? The iPad, or the phone, or the shiny app, right? Or the comics, the picture of Batman and the thing, and that's all it takes, where people, the kids will see that thing that they have a really good feeling about, and you say, oh, rāda māori koe no wangi thea, and help them, whatever help they need to be able to do that. They're feeling happy about it, they're feeling excited to talk about a thing that they feel good about it, and they feel powerful about, you know? And sometimes, just, just the device itself does the job. I've got one of my nephews, 
who one time three years ago I did a game with him on on my little iPad where we made some comments. And every time I've seen him since then, he's like, oh, did you bring it? Did you bring it? Can we do that thing again? Can we do it again? Blah, 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 blah. He's never forgotten it. It's the best day of his life, apparently, that Tommy Lee. <laughs> like, you know? And, and that's what it's like. You know, they, they, it's true. They love their phones and they love their tablets and their bits and pieces, but we can piggyback on the back of that love and put the language in there. That's the, that's the idea. And so. that. So, I've done things and maybe we've done some of these things in our um, class. Make little comics like that. <laughs> Can be very topical. See that's uh, Dora, an important literary figure, and uh, there's Trump in there, an important contemporary political <laughs> figure, you know. So very creative, very relevant. Um, this thing here is a really cool app called Toon Test It, where you can make animated cartoons and you play it on your phone or your tablet, and it's really easy and really fast. And um, if you look on our YouTube, YouTube, you can see a hundred or something stories made with this app, and you can <coughs> enjoy them yourselves. Um, so this is a that's a GIF made out of a, a comic strip. So that's the pictures put together in a little animation, but its normal thing is just a, a comic strip like in the newspaper. You know? <coughs> So they are really easy and fun to make. This one's really easy and fun to do. This one's maybe uh, more suitable for maybe older kids and maybe particularly suitable for older kids and young adults in New Zealand who live their life on the internet in the world of memes and all of that kind of stuff. Is that something that means you all know what memes are? <laughs> that's, a, that's a meme. And uh, I've translated that meme into Māori, right? And now it's a funny thing and they recognise it and then they feel good about recognising it, it reminds them of their place where they feel good, and then now they've got the Māori version of that idea. You know, and it helps them to remember, it helps it to stick, if, it, if that memorable image goes with it. You know? um, and we even do some of this sort of stuff, and I'll show you a little clip in a second, where you take a bit of popular media, a little bit from a movie or a TV or whatever, and you can uh, do this with it, and I'll show you. clips in there and some other translation of little short clips. If you want to see more of that, Arya Tukoi Ge Unito Tato YouTube. It's Mama Ite Ite Kimi. If you can be a Kimi Google Koi Arara Māori Kuki Aramei, Katu Kuki Moa. It's the first hit if you Google that. And I'll put a link up at the end of this if you want to look for it. It's heaps and heaps of those stories up there. Stories that um, kids in New Zealand have made, stories that kids in here have made, especially the kids in Mauke where I go a lot, and some, some here from Rotonga as well, and uh, stories that these Puapi, my students here, have made a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. There's a lot there, um, and they're, they're fun, and I think you enjoy it, and maybe your kids will enjoy it too, right? Um, yeah, so then we get our happy learners. If they're playing with these devices, which the device itself makes them happy because just that's the way it is these days. They like that thing and they feel good to play with it. And then it's really fast to make the, the product, if you will. It's really fast, the turnover is really fast, and then suddenly they've got this little movie that they've made that they can show with their friends and it makes them laugh. And it's like, um, every time I show these clips, whether I'm showing it to kids or adults or anyone, immediately everyone's very excited about it, right? Very drawn in, very interested, you know? Because partly, of course, that's because it's not that common. 
get to see this kind of thing, but also, oh, it's just like, oh, that's cool. Here's the stuff that I see all the time in movies and cartoons and all that kind of thing, Batman and etc. Um, and look at that. There it is in Māori. That's nice. That's exciting. Yeah. And that's an example of talking about all the things, because we can talk about all those things. Nothing to stop us. We just got to try, you know. Um, um, sometimes we need to get the kids started on the idea. What are you going to talk about? And what I like to do is I like to pick whatever their favourite thing is. Um, I usually teach university kids, young adults, um, and they they like Star Wars, they like Beyonce, and they like Harry Potter. <laughs> That's what they like. So those are common common topics that we that we pick. And I use them for teaching. So. Uh, sorry, spoilers, spoilers for um, the later Harry Potter books if you haven't read them. <laughs> um, but so say, well, mate, a tomrito e a nepe. And this is an example of a particular kind of tahi atu korero, right? The tahi atu korero no tu anga. And tuge tuge te popa anga o te tahi atu korero. Me ko te te kairo no te tangata anga anga, me me tuge tuge. So this is a particularly difficult uh, type of construction for learners to learn in Māori because the way it works is very sort of confusing and it sort of is backwards from what people expect, you know. Um, but if I give them this kind of sentence and I put the story in where they know what happened, they know what happened, right, they're not going to get confused. They won't think that somebody Thor killed Snake because they know that somebody Thor didn't kill Snake with the Snake that killed Tommy Thor, right, because they're familiar with the story. Um, and so that helps them to remember how to use that sentence right, you know, because they latch on, they can remember the story, it's their favourite story or whatever, and they know what happened, they don't get confused, you know, because, you know, uh, if any of you try to teach, teach Māori, you might have come across this problem, uh, people want, so, in case you don't know, Dumbledore was killed by Snake. Snake killed Dumbledore, right, in the, in the stories, in the Harry Potter story, spoilers if you haven't seen that or read that. Um, but learners will sometimes think that this sentence works the other way around, right? You might have seen this, they might think it means that Tomorito killed Snake because that's the Papa Ama or Teta I Tate Kore or Ke, right? That's the way the other kind works, the, the, the active transitive sentence works like that. This one works differently, but it's confusing, and the English word kill and die is confusing and all that kind of stuff, so they're prone to getting this back to front, right? But if I give them this one as their main example for it, it helps them to remember because they won't forget who killed who in the story, right? And you can pick the appropriate story for your students if they're, you know, if it's not Harry Potter. Harry Potter seems, even though Harry Potter's kind of old now, every group of students I get still to this day, they love it, I don't understand it, but I use it, right? That's what I use. Um, another, another extremely, extremely popular topic is the popular of this. Uh, I once got a class full of students who'd only been learning for like three and a half weeks. I did an activity where I where that activity where you go around the room and you say you say a sentence and then the next person follows and, and everyone adds on and makes the story. Is there a name for that thing? You know what I mean? So and they wrote, they said, and I wrote it down, they wrote 7,000 words about Beyonce. They've been learning for three and a half weeks, but they love Beyonce so much, they tried really hard to say as much as they possibly could about Beyonce, including some things which are probably not true, like, and Beyonce, and things like that, right? But, it included this thing here, which if you look at this, is very, very sophisticated language, right? Um, so, there's a lot of stuff going on in there, right? There's normal, normal sentence at the beginning, but there's some real sophisticated extra stuff happening at the end, there's instrumental stuff, there's possessive stuff, there's all kinds of things, right? Quite complicated, this is what the first student said. So she said, I named my car after Beyonce's daughter, because that's how much they love Beyonce, right? <laughs> they love it. Um, and then the Tona Taya Keki Tona Pai, the next one beside her, Marometa Hidanarara, 
eh ada mai kaya mereka perlu ada tengok auto charlat kau itu tak tunggu auto charlat itu kan eh so mar ma ayat itu tanah rada eh aku kiri itu tua itu yang mana amazing 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 these were just beginners just beginners they had only been there for a very short time but they were had got so into this topic that they had been motivated to work out how to say these complicated things yeah so don't underestimate the power of your students' favorite subject or your grandkids' favorite subject to keep them enthusiastic talking. All right. Um, how's our time? I know we really yeah. started a... Yeah, I'm close to Yeah, so I'll, I'll skip our game, sorry. If you want to stay behind and play the game, I'll, I'll play the game later. Okay. You want to have some time for some questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just going Yeah. So, the main thing is, Make the activity low stress. Oh yes, we'll both <laughs> These are what these are. This is my group of students here. Um, they'll for me. Yeah, great, great group. We have a lot of fun, right? Yeah. Um, make it, make it low stress. Make it low stakes. Make it fun. Make it about their favorite, their favorite thing. And you can do this in a classroom, or you can do it in your living room over dinner. You know, grandma and goto rara kanga. You know. Or in whatever place is appropriate in your household for doing that kind of thing, you know. Um, and target language that enables them to talk about the stuff they really want to talk about. So help them to be able to talk about Beyonce or Harry Potter or the Avengers or the All Blacks or whatever it is which is their favourite thing, you know, that they get excited about and they want to talk about. Help them with the language that they need to be able to talk about that. That's the that's the idea, yeah. Um, and it does seem to be an effective, effective method when I when I when I get to do it. Always really, we have a good time, whether it's with adults like this group or with kids. It always generates a lot of enthusiasm, and it generates new Maori stories, right? So if they make a little theatre to work it on YouTube. It to a Maori oak. And we can all see it. Right? If the Tamariki Mokke over there, they make like that one with the robot and that one I showed you that was the kids in Mokke. They made that, they are in Mokke. We put it on the internet and now all the kids in New Zealand can see that. And that's giving them not exactly the perfect way, but in some way, a clear language. Right? So instead of the kids only ever hearing by like the mama, right? They can hear you know, they can hear it each other, the peer language. So it works it works for that potentially as well. So it's got a lot of value. The kids are learning and improving and deepening their deal. They're making a story in Māori, so there are more stop stories in Māori that exist. And then other kids in other places can enjoy that story and that little excitement can get passed on hopefully, right? That's the hope. So there's all these layers to it. Um, yeah, and like I said, that's what I just said. Um, for for all of them, they are and for both the two they are the Roma, but for the Kia, the Kia, Mama, and they are the Mako Oum, or the Kio, and if you've got the kind of thing that can scan that, you can pick up that link and this one here will take you to a website that we try to look after which gives some how-to advice about the apps, about what kind of device you need, about how you can do it, some examples of activities and things like that. Right? And the one on the other side is for our YouTube page where there are a hundred and something videos ranging from very serious discussions about very serious topics to very, very silly stuff, right? And everything in between, yeah. Um, and so, no reta, te akumeta i ne au i akoto i te ae mai te akumeta i aku i te ako, te akumeta i au i a tebi, no te ikianga i aku i te tu e rara i te ako, 
Tobu in an arrow, no, he a corre the deo, a maro. He a corre the deo, a maro. God out of the tummy, tummy, Morela. Tato, the Arma Pocket, here are the in a maro, it there are it there are not the Arma, 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 it there are not